Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. And I'm Lisa. And in today's episode, we're talking about the seven deadly sins that we see sellers and their agents do or don't do when selling a home. So let's get started. And remember, if you like our videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more about the Prescott area. Okay, let's get started. These seven sins are the most sinful of all when trying to sell your home. Sin number seven is restricting showings. We try to show as many homes as we can to our buyers, but we also don't like to overwhelm them. So we encourage them to pick the homes that most closely match the criteria they've set for the home they want to purchase. And honestly, buyers do want to see as many homes as they can when they're in town because they are usually limited on time. As a seller, when you restrict your showing times, it throws off everyone's schedule. And here's why. Most of the time, buyers come to town for maybe a day or so, and they want to see as many homes in that time frame as possible. So here's what happens. They let us know the day before they arrive what they want to see. We double check with the agent to make sure the home is still available, ask if there are any offers, and really do our homework to ensure our buyer's time is well spent. We map out a showing route for showings in a particular order so it's convenient for everyone. What we don't want to do is drag the buyers from one end of town to the other, chasing the erratic times the seller is set for viewing their home. So sellers, if you're listening, don't restrict showings don't say we can show it two days from now no buyers want to see the home today not in two days it instantly turns the buyers off and they think well i guess they don't want to sell their home that badly and they won't come back to see it remember you only have one chance to make a first impression and restricting showing time gives buyers a bad impression here's a great idea go away for the first weekend the home is listed that way, there are no restrictions as far as how many people can get into your home to view it. Doing this will create a buzz about your home. Your agent could also do an open house and allow it to be viewed by the public as well as other agents and other buyers. Number six on our list of sins is not having your house virtually staged or otherwise. Don't show buyers a vacant house. Regardless of what you think, buyers usually don't have the imagination to envision how great your house would look with furniture or other accents. We recommend hiring a professional stager to look at your home and furniture and maybe move things around to improve the flow and the look. If you no longer live in the home, then virtual staging is probably a good idea. There are many companies out there and many talented photographers who can virtually stage your home. Showing beds and other furnishings in the bedrooms and furniture and other accent items in the living rooms. Showing functionality and the flow of the home. When buyers start their search online, showing a staged home could make all the difference in the world to them. Sin number five is not repainting. Believe it or not, nobody likes your red room. Nobody. Seriously, repaint it. If you've painted the daughter's room pink, repaint it. If your son's room is blue, repaint it. It's very distracting to have a rainbow of colors in one house. Repainting is the most cost-effective way to transform the entire look of your home. Paint it very neutral, soft white or a light tan or even a light gray, even though some people say that gray is now out of style. You want to appeal to the masses. You want to create a blank slate so buyers can envision themselves living in your home. Number four is not making it comfortable. Here's what we mean by this. Have you ever gone into a restaurant and you're so cold you just want to get your food and go home? Well, it's the same thing for houses. No one wants to walk into a house that is hot during the summer, cold during the winter. It doesn't matter if you're staying there or not. You need to have the heat on when it's cold and you need to have the air conditioning on when it's warm or buyers won't spend any time in your home. The third deadly sin is not having lights on. It is key to turn on every single light in the home before every showing and we mean every light in your house. 
You want to make sure to show your home in the best light, so to speak. So make it light and bright and inviting. Don't keep the curtains closed either, as the more light that comes into your home, the better. Don't keep the curtains closed either, as the more light that comes into your home, the better. Let buyers see how nice it looks when the, home, the sun shines into your house. You certainly don't want buyers to walk into the dark cave. The number two deadly sin is sellers staying in the house while the home is being shown. This is such a big no-no. Why in the world would you stay in the home when showing? It's completely uncalled for and it makes everyone feel uncomfortable. Think about it. How many times have you gone into a store and you just want to look at the shirts or the dresses in peace and someone comes up to you and offers their opinion or just lurks around you for the entire time? Go away! It's so annoying. And what usually happens is you just walk away in disgust, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the truth. Not only that, but we've heard sellers talk and say things that they should probably keep to themselves. And believe me, no one wants to hear their life story or anything else about their family. So it's a good idea for sellers to leave. And the number one deadly sin, and we're sure you've heard it a gazillion times, is overpricing your home. Websites like Zillow, which is the number one site people are searching to do their home valuation, and we can't tell you how many times they're wrong, sellers get this number in their head and say, well, Zillow says it's so that's what my home is worth. They overprice the home and it doesn't sell until it has a few price reductions. The problem with Zillow's valuation is that Zillow uses an algorithm. Here's where Zillow does okay. If there are a lot of homes that are the same type of cookie cutter homes and this neighborhood goes on for blocks and blocks, that's where it's good. Where it's bad is where there are lots of variations in homes. For instance, Prescott and the surrounding cities is a perfect example of this. We have older neighborhoods where there may be manufactured homes next to newer site built homes or maybe a development of manufactured homes half a mile away from a luxury neighborhood. And this really screws up valuations. So the best thing to do is to start going to some open houses in your neighborhood. Take a look at what's in those homes, what's around them, the amenities of those houses in great detail. Compare them to yours and then add or subtract for different valuations so you can come up with the true market value of your home. Your overpriced house is just going to sit longer and longer and the price will have to come down. The buyers will think there's something wrong with it. And what happens almost every time in the end, you're going to end up with getting less than you should have. So remember folks, price it right in the first place. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this sinful video today. We appreciate you watching. If you're thinking about moving to the Prescott area, we can help you get to know the place we call home. Just go to our website and click on find your home. If you're thinking about selling, go to our website, prescottrealestateandliving.com and get your home's approximate value by clicking on sell your home near the middle of the page. We appreciate when you like and subscribe to our channel because it helps others find this information. We post videos every week to help you get familiar with everything the Prescott area has to offer. Check the description below for our contact information and to request buyer and seller guides or a relocation package. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.